everybody. Welcome to the Zoo Classroom. It's so good to have you. But, uh, Megan? Yeah? Hello? I'm up here. Oh, no. Oh, I'm up here. Look. What? I'm Manager Brass today. I'm getting the gist of being a giraffe, kind of seeing what it's like to have a whole new perspective on the world. And guess what? This ceiling's only like nine feet tall. So I'm only as tall as a baby giraffe right now. I know, that's too cool. All right, I'll get down so I can chat for a minute. <laughs> Hang on, friends. <laughs> Welcome again to Zoo Classroom. All right. <laughs> hey, everyone. My name is Cynthia. Um, before we get too deep into the world of giraffes and how outstanding they are in the world, let's go over the rules real quick, okay? Uh, first of all, your mics are muted, and we're going to keep them that way. That way you're not hearing a million different people talking at one time. So it's kind of for your convenience. Uh, also, I want to ask you some questions, and I know I'm going to get some fabulous answers. You guys are so smart. Every single time you blow me away when I'm monitoring the chat box with some of your answers to our questions. So just remember, when I ask you something, type it into that chat box, okay? And if you have questions for me about the program and the things that we're talking about today, and I don't answer them in my words to you, type those in the Q&A, okay? And I've got this amazing panel of experts around me, and between them and I, we might be able to get those questions answered for you, all right? So welcome in. I want you to meet a friend. Hi. I made a brand new friend today. Yes, and guess what, guys? He is such a new friend. I just got him this morning in the zoo gift shop, gift shop. By the way, next time you come to the zoo, it wouldn't be a bad idea to stop in and maybe find yourself a little stuffed giraffe to bug mom and dad about and say, hey, some of the money might go to giraffe conservation. We should, you should get me one. You can try it, see how it doesn't work on my kid. Well, yes it does. But um, anyway, he's such a new friend, but I haven't given him a name yet. And I wanted to share this opportunity with you guys. So in that chat box, tell me what you think would be a great name for our new friend. He's a boy. I've, I've already decided I want a boyfriend. So he's a boy. <laughs> and Brittany, she's going to shout him out to me and I'm going to pick a name. What, what are they thinking? What would be a great Weird. name? Weird. Spot. Gary. Spot. Spot. Gary, Joey, Zach. Oh my goodness. Gary, Jerry, Zoe, Janet. <laughs> I heard Spot, and I really like that. So if it's okay with everybody, let's go with Spot. So we're going to call this new friend of ours Spot the Giraffe. And I see him. I spotted him. I know you spotted him. <laughs> That's perfect. So when you spot a giraffe, what is one of the first things that stands out to you about this amazing land mammal? There's a lot. That's why we're doing a whole program on just one animal because there's so many outstanding things about them. They are really incredible in the world. They have some unique traits that other animals don't. So what do you see? What do you think of first? Some people said height. Height. Long neck. Long neck. And that one that's a pattern. Absolutely, absolutely. Those are great guys, see? See guys, you're impressing me already. But truly the height is usually the first thing folks notice uh, about giraffes. In fact, while I was standing up on that ladder, got a little bit of an idea of what it would be like to be a giraffe. I was only half the size up there at nine feet of the tallest giraffe on record. The Guinness Book of World Records tells us that there is currently a 12-year-old male giraffe at the Australia Zoo named Forrest. He is 18 feet, 8 inches tall. Oh, that's crazy. I'm 5 nothing. In fact, how many of you have uh, two stories in your house? Like a bottom floor, and then you go up the steps to the second floor? 
well, if you go up to your second floor and you open your window and a giraffe walked up, you'd be looking right in his face. That's how tall about 16, 17, 18 feet is. So really, really tall. They're the world's tallest land mammal. They hold that record. And of course, the next thing you mentioned, this beautiful coat pattern. Absolutely gorgeous. It is spotted, so spot your appropriately named. And some history with giraffes. Years and years ago, like way back in 200 BC, so we're talking thousands of years ago, when the Romans first brought camels to Europe, they thought that they were a cross between camels and leopards. They actually, and you can kind of see how that might be the case. That's a drawing from um, somebody's imagination of uh, what a camel leopard would be from a giraffe. And they actually, the northern giraffe species, there are four species of giraffe or four different kinds. And the northern giraffe's Latin name is camelocardalis, which is camel leopard. So we've come a long way in the world of science and technology since that happened. But I just think it's kind of cool. And here is a piece of skin from a giraffe that we had that passed away years ago. And you can see the spot pattern on this giraffe. So the four different species have all different patterns. And there's also no two exactly the same patterns within individual giraffes. So just like your fingerprints, do you know that no two people have the exact same fingerprints? No two giraffes have the exact same spot pattern. So why would a giraffe need to be spotted? Where do they live? Where are they from? Any guesses? Africa, Madagascar? Bingo, Africa. That, that Africa is correct. They're actually not native to Madagascar, but great guess. They are African and they live in the woodlands and the grasslands of Africa. And um, do you think then that, I mean, being 16, 17, 18 feet tall, do you think it would be easy to hide? Let's imagine being that tall, yet blending in in my environment. But take a look at this, friends. Can you see that? Can you imagine? That is a giraffe being camouflaged. It's actually amazing. Because they live in woodlands, the way the sun comes through the branches of the trees and puts the spot patterns, they blend right in. And I just think that is so cool. So we are going to get a little bit deeper into the study of these guys. And I think we'll just cover them from head to toe. Or better yet, let's cover them from hoof to ossicum. Why don't we do that? Okay? So starting with the hoofs, Spot's got the cutest hooves. And they did it accurately. I'm so impressed because this is a real hook from a giraffe. They are two-toed, even-toed ungulates, and they have some really cool abilities, right? So why do you think, look how big they are. I'm telling you guys, my ice cream bowl that I used last night to eat my ice cream was not as big as this hook. <laughs> But why do you think it would need to be so big? Look at those feet. Any guesses there? Jeremy says to run. Good guess, Jeremy. They do. They can run. They certainly can. About 30, 35 miles per hour. And you know what? When you're running, these big hooks kind of help you from sinking down in the soil, right? Because when they, they live in those grasslands, and sometimes the soil can be pretty soft. So almost like a snowshoe, we'll call it a soft soil shoe. They have these big feet for that. Not 
just running, not just walking, but every once in a while, these gentle giants can get a little upset, especially mamas looking out for their babies or males upset with another male over a female. They've been known to use their long legs and these sharp pointy hooves to kick, right? They're a good defense. They can really help protect the animal. So that's very, very cool. All right, so let's keep traveling. So we do have a couple sorry. of questions. I'm sorry, sure, we can answer some um, questions. If you're at a pause here. Yeah, um, so Charles wants to know, um, weren't they related to horses? And if yes, are they evolutionary cousins with horses? Wow, Charles, you are over impressing me with your questions <laughs> because my mind did not study the evolution of giraffes what? so much. Um, uh, uh, giraffes are two-toed ungulates, right? What about a horse? They have a hoof. Do they have two? They have one. They're single-toed, right? We know that. Um, and as we go further, we'll talk about some things that giraffes have that maybe all the other animals don't. So. Um, if my expert might want to help me Google a little bit more into they're, detail. They're a little bit different than horses. Yeah. So, uh, different. so they definitely diverge and they're more similar to cattle and uh, sheep than they are the equine families. Right, being that their stomachs are different and some other things that we'll get into as well. But that is just a fabulous nice. question. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Charles. And then I did have um, one more question. Sure. I think you might be touching on this later, but I'll go ahead and mention it now. Uh, Mrs. Woodard's class from Rogers Lane Elementary School Hi, um, class. wants to learn about uh, giraffe communication. So do you have anything planned for that? That is that is such a good question and one of my favorite aspects of uh, that I came up upon when studying and researching uh, giraffes and we are going to get into it. Remember we're going to go hoof to top. So when we get up to this area we are going to talk about communication. So I got you covered. I got the whole class covered there guys and we'll get to that. And again, when we do, if you have further questions, please feel free to ask. And any comments in the chat is fine. When I ask you things, even if you're not sure, go ahead and put what you're thinking, right? Because that's how we learn. I learn more from getting things wrong than from getting them right. So don't hesitate to go ahead and put whatever you're thinking in, okay? All right, so we're gonna get back to spot. One of the things going up that we noticed very, very, very early in our observation of giraffes are these long legs, right? Ooh, giraffes are known for their long legs. So the typical leg size of an adult giraffe is about, hold on, hang on, Spot. I wonder if this is too close. Huh? Um, so about six feet. So let's check that out. So I'm five feet tall. No short jokes, please. Don't put those in your chat box. Okay, I'm five feet tall. So there's six feet. Oh, look. <laughs> oh, let you help. Okay, <laughs> there's six feet tall right up there. So this so, is floor. So guys, that, oh, yeah. that's just the length of the average adult. Legs. Guys, most of us, including me, could probably walk under their bellies. <laughs> under them because their legs are so tall. Is that not crazy? I think it's amazing. I just love that about that. Yeah, Brittany. Just a quick comment through these times. Um, with the six feet there, Charles says that is social distancing length. Oh, yeah. Charles. You better, I'm gonna start telling people, stay a giraffe slide away from me, please, unless you have your mask on. Thank you, Charles. That was a very good note. Good note. All right. And speaking of notes, note this. This is a lower leg bone from a giraffe. So it's heavy and it's big. And that's about all I got, okay? But it comes from about this part. Lower. Yep. Sorry. Even lower. Yep. <laughs> that part. So maybe not to scale, but you get the idea, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> very, very cool though. Very cool. All right. So 
those long legs serve lots of purposes, right? Um, they help them when they run, right? They help add to their height, of course. And there are some other neat things that having long legs help with, and we'll get into that too. But the next body part of this little cute spot I want to talk about is the tail, right? Giraffes have long tails, and even though Spot does not seem to be um, biologically correct because his <laughs> tail hair isn't very long, let me show you something. Check this out, guys. So this is actual giraffe tail hair. These are real from our giraffes here at the zoo that the keepers were nice enough to get for us. Look, check them out. They are sturdy. I couldn't do this with, well, I was gonna say one of my tail hairs, but you know. <laughs> try it. Take the hair off your head. Try to yank it and pull it. You know you're gonna break it, right? Look how strong they are. They're like cable or wire. Some people have compared them to guitar strings or fishing line. That's how amazing they are. In fact, in Africa, sometimes they'll use them and they'll weave them into jewelry or cable ties or helpful things. So how amazing is that? Now, why though? As scientists, we always want to know why. Why would a giraffe need two feet long tail hairs? <laughs> Guess is there? I don't. He needs an extension. He needs some. He needs his extensions. Oh, someone says this what fly. Yes. yes. Yeah. You guys are so smart. Absolutely. So remember, they walk on four legs, so they don't actually have extra hands. So when that big old horse fly lands on their booty, they can't use a hand to slap it off, right? But whoo, he's got that wiry, strong tail hair, and they make excellent fly swatters. So I just. I just think it's so cool. Okay. I'm sorry. I get excited when I talk about giraffes. So we'll come from the tail and we'll go. Let's see. He wasn't that ticklish on his feet without tummy. Okay. Sorry. Um, tummies. Giraffes have very interesting stomachs. They have something we call a four chambered stomach. Um, and what that means is, well, first of all, what do you think they eat? Let's talk about that. Do you think these guys are predators in the grasslands or, or do you think they're prey? You know, it's leaves and then someone says prey. You got it, guys. Absolutely. They are, they're not predators, so they're not running after their food. They're eating plants, right? Plants and leaves and grasses and mostly leaves from a couple of different species of trees that they love. So they're big. We talked about how tall they are. Do you know they're also the third largest in terms of weight land mammal? Right behind elephants and rhinos, you come to giraffes. They can weigh adults between three and 4,000 pounds. So if all they're eating is plants, they've got to eat a lot of them, right? So they eat about 16 to 18 hours a day, taking a lot of food. So with a four chambered stomach, and it might get a little gross on you here, guys, but we're tough, we can handle this. They eat that plant material, real fibrous, right? And it goes into the first, they swallow it, and it goes into the first chamber of that stomach. Sometimes that first chamber can't quite handle all that fibrous material. So they spit it back up, yay! And it goes up, up, up their, their throats and back into their mouths. Chew it again <laughs> to get it to break down even further. And that is called, anybody know? You may have seen some domestic farm animals do this. It's called chewing there. Come on, I'm going to wait for it because this is a good one. I know you know this. Yeah. Terry says next. Terry next says, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Terry. So, yeah, <laughs> chewing their cod. Thank you, uh, Terry. So that is exactly what it is. And they'll chew that cud. And if you're lucky, when you come to the zoo next time, guys, and spend some time checking out our giraffes, I want you to watch closely their necks because you can see sometimes after they've been eating a while, 
you can see a little bolus or a little ball of food go back up their throat and into their mouth and they're almost always chewing. And so once they've chewed that cud a time or two or three, it'll go into the other chambers of the stomach and then it can be digested and come out looking like milk suds. Yay! Or professionally, giraffe poop. And this is indeed real giraffe poop, guys. Sorry if it grosses you out, but it's, it's so uh -huh. cool. I mean, <laughs> who'd have thought that a 4,000 pound giraffe could poop milk suds? Well, the there's, size of milk suds. There's a lot they're of them, though. <laughs> no, they're not yes, they're right. not truly chocolate. Boy, that would be magic. That, well, that could be a whole other program. Oh, but my God. No, we're just, that's just what the, what the poop comes out like. After going through all those chambers of the stomach, it gets broken down enough to come out like this. That's amazing. Okay, now, whoa. Sorry, Spot, I didn't mean to choke you. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about another body part that Spot has. So- Oh, before you move on to that yes. really quick. Uh, What's up, Megan? Why is their poop so small from Krissa? Well, Krissa, it really has a lot to do with the fact that we were just talking there's four chambers in that stomach and the giraffes chew their food often enough by producing a cud and chewing it again and again and again until they can break it down to where there is not much of it that left that needs to be um, pooped out. So, because it's just the waste that's pooped out, but they break it down so much while they're chewing with the help of all the chambers of their stomach that they utilize a whole lot of the plant material for, for their health. So not much has to come out on the other end. So kind of cool. Just the opposite of elephants. Elephants aren't very nope. <laughs> efficient at all uh, when they eat. So you may notice a difference when you come to the zoo and the size of one to the other. But speaking of size, what's this? It is my um, only, uh, but my low budget uh, version of a basketball because it's all I had. <laughs> this is a basketball. And it is the size of an adult giraffe's heart. I know, amazing. I mean, it can weigh 25 pounds. I wish I could spin it on my finger. I'd do it for you, but I'll, <laughs> I'll drop it. Um, but can you imagine a 25 pound heart the size of a basketball? Now, your and my heart is this big. Right? Look at that. That's just crazy. Why though, guys? Think about this, you smart people. Why would a giraffe need a heart the size of a basketball? What does the heart do? What does it do for us and for giraffes? I'll practice my, my dribbling while Brittany calls them out to be your answers. Why would they say that pumps blood? Bingo, I guess I'm done practicing. You're right, guys. That is exactly what it does. So the heart pumps blood to the rest of the body, right? All the parts of the body. But when you're 18 feet tall, your heart's down here. It's got a lot of work to do, doesn't it? So it needs to pump blood all the way up to the brain and all the way down to the hooves, doesn't it? So that's a lot of work. So giraffes have a very specialized circulatory system. They have valves that are built into their blood vessels. And when that heart pumps the blood up the neck to get to the brain where it's really needed, right? You would think gravity would say, okay, I can't go up anymore, boom, and gravity would pull it back down. But they've got these very specialized valves in their blood vessels. So when the blood goes up, a valve shuts behind it, pushing it up farther. Another valve shuts behind it, pushing it up, pushing it up until it gets all the way to the rest of the body. And the same happens down here, getting it down to the legs. 
And fun fact, this is really cool. NASA, the astronaut people, they are actually studying the circulatory system of giraffes to see if they can use anything to help um, create spacesuits for astronauts. Because when astronauts are in space for a while, they have trouble with their circulation. And so they're studying giraffes to see if they can kind of recreate it for the astronauts. I just think that's amazing. We can learn so much from animals, guys. I say it every day. They're just so much that we can learn from them. So, and another thing about the heart, those specialized blood vessels really help. Have you ever seen a picture or in a video of a giraffe getting a drink? <laughs> well, those long legs and that long neck make it a little bit difficult, doesn't it? So let me show you this picture. Look how they have to kind of lay out their front legs and bend their necks way down. Fortunately, they are adapted to not have to drink too often, maybe once every other day, because they get most of the moisture from those plants that they eat. But they do occasionally need to visit the watering hole, and it is is a challenge for them. It puts them in a vulnerable spot, right? Because they splay their legs out like this, put that big giant neck way down. What if a lion pride is behind them and comes roaring out? They're going to have to pick their heads up real fast and start running. Well, I don't know about you, but if I have my head down to touch my toes, do that every day, right? We all do. Anyway, if I were to, and I had to jump up real quick, I would get very dizzy because that's a lot of blood rushing from my head, but they don't because of those specialized blood vessels in their circulatory system. I mean, what's cooler than that? That's so cool. All right, so we're at the heart. We're moving up in the world <laughs> to the most famous body part, I think, of a giraffe, and that's their necks, right? So, of course, they're vertebrates. So they have bones in their necks, just like we do, right? Um, and they're called cervical vertebrae in their necks because cervical for neck. Now, how many vertebrae do we have, guys? Uh, do me a favor. Feel behind your necks. You'll feel these little bumps. You can kind of move your head up and down and side to side and feel them a little better. Those are your cervical vertebrae. Do you know how many humans have? We have a guess of 32, and then one of seven. 32 is a good guess. Seven is a great guess. There are seven. Human beings have seven vertebrae, about that big, in our necks to help us move our necks back and forth, side to side, up and down. Um, so how many then? Do you think that this giraffe who has like a six foot long neck about the size of his legs, how many vertebrae do you think he has in his neck? A couple of guesses of seven. What? What? 200? 200? I, I would have thought 18. 200. 18? Yes, what? seven. All right. Well, those of you that are saying <laughs> seven, again, you're right. Seven, seven vertebrae in their necks, just like us. So you guys have something in common with Spot. You both have the same number of bones in your neck. And I just think that is so amazing, right? Um, and I have a friend with me today that also has an amazing neck, and I can't wait for you to meet her. So while my friend Nikki brings our friend out, I'm going to show you a few more things. Um, this is actually a cervical vertebrae, a model or a replica of one. And it's just so cool. So they're big, right? Ours are this big, while spots are this big. So if you stack seven of them together, you get that size of a neck, right? And they're in this ball and socket formation. So this rounded part that you see fits into the next one's socket part. So that allows them to have some movement and stuff. 
but I gotta say, even though their necks are super long and amazing, there's an even more friend that has a superstar neck, and I can't wait for you to meet her when Vicky's ready. If she, if well, she's she ready. Me. <laughs> it's her getting ready. So these necks, guys, when the giraffe, remember I mentioned they're not always gentle giants. Sometimes they get grumpy or aggressive with other males when they're fighting over a female. They actually use their necks for hitting and fighting. And they call that necking, that behavior in the giraffe world. And it's pretty amazing to watch. All right. I think our friend is ready, guys. And if any of you have been with us before, you may know who this friend is. Yes, if she's comfortable. Guys, this is Tara. And Tara is our superstar <laughs> barn owl. She is absolutely lovely. And she's one of our dearest friends that we have here in our Animal Ambassador Program. <laughs> and I wanted to include Tara today in our program because she's not a giraffe, is she? Well, she's not a giraffe, <laughs> but she has an amazing neck, Nikki. So remember, we talked about humans and giraffes and actually most mammals having seven bones in our necks. Well, Tara has an ability to do something. Um, she might be sort of doing it now. Yeah. To do something that mammals, most mammals can't do. She has more neck bones than we do. If anybody <laughs> wants to take a guess, I'd love to know what you're thinking. She has more. So even though she's much smaller than a giraffe, she has, any guesses? 20, 18, 15. Oh, so close. So she has twice the number that giraffes do. She has 14. And those 14 neck bones give her some incredible flexibility. So do me a favor, guys, while you're looking at Tara, look straight ahead, but then I want you to turn don't move your body. Turn your head all the way to the right as far as you can. Now the way to the left as far as you can. Back to straight. That about as far as you go, maybe 90 degrees we call that in one direction. Well, Miss Tara. Hi, pretty girl. Oh, she's Whoa, there it. she goes. Yeah, she actually can do way better. She can start with her eyes looking forward. Show us a right. here. here. This shoulder. Look over to Brittany. And then look over here to Megan. What? <laughs> she can actually move her neck three quarters of the way around a circle in any direction, right or left. You and I can only do one quarter of the way around the circle in any direction, right? She, because of those incredible neck bones, has that ability. So I just think that's fabulous. And one of the reasons that birds have kind of adapted to be able to do that is because their eyes are a little bit different. And I actually have, don't want to freak you out here, beautiful. <laughs> but this is actually a replica of a barred owl skull or a skull very much like Tara's. I want you to notice the eye sockets. These ocular pieces of bone prevent Tara from being able to move her eyes around in her head. So she doesn't have the best peripheral vision. And that's just vision that allows us to see on the side, right? So if you're staring straight ahead like I am, with my peripheral vision, I can actually see Tara and Nikki. And on the other side, I can see Brittany helping me with uh, my chats because we have that ability. We can move our eyes within our eye sockets, right? Well, Tara does not, but she does have the ability to move her neck all the way behind her. Now, can she move it 360 degrees, the entire circle? What do you think? It's, it says no. Right. It, that's a myth. 
and that's a pretty common myth we see in cartoons um, owls doing that they can't go quite that far their their joints and ligaments and vertebrae aren't designed for a full rotation but they get pretty darn close don't they so beautiful beautiful animal thank you so much so we do have a couple okay, of questions, questions. about miss tara yeah Come on back up and show that face. So Julie and Aaron, um, everybody's kind of wanting to know about her missing eye. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, that's a, a good eye, guys. Uh, <laughs> Tara does have a missing eye. And Tara has such a neat story. She came to us as uh, an injured animal. We here at the zoo, we actually have a wildlife hospital. Um, where we take in orphaned and injured wild animals and we do our very best to rehabilitate them and get them healthy and strong again. And then hopefully the end goal is to release them back into the wild. But it doesn't always happen. And we believe, hi Tara, she's turned that head a lot. We believe that Tara may have been hit by a car and um, she lost that eye in that accident. Uh, that's um, unfortunate, but uh, we worked with her and worked with her. We determined that with that missing eye, it would be very difficult for her to survive in the wild because owls are good hunters and they need that night vision to be able to catch their prey, right? And so we determined, we actually did some tests with her to see if she could catch prey, live prey, and she could not. So she became our rock star of, a, of an animal ambassador and uh, we we work with Tara quite a bit our education keepers and educated and education staff have trained her and work with her and guys she's a wild animal it took years to be able to have a wild animal calmly jump up to Nikki's glove and sit there while we talk about her so amazing amazing thing and she is a rock star. It took patience and hard work, but but she's there. And oh, there she goes. Look at that beautiful. <laughs> she's just beautiful. Any other questions about Tara? I'm holding this tennis ball in case you're curious because we're going <laughs> to talk about giraffe vision. They don't have the night vision capabilities that owls do, but they do have huge eyes. This tennis ball is the size of a giraffe eyeball. It's about as big as Tara's head. It's yeah. about as big as Tara's head. So before Tara goes, we want to ask, sure. uh, what is her favorite food? I did see that question oh, come goodness. up. Pretty much any food you can remember. <laughs> <laughs> She's not pretty particular picky. She likes anything. Right now, she is not picking what we're giving her. It's not enough. She's just she might be so full. She does okay. eat cut up mice. Yeah. Sometimes she'll eat cut up pieces of chicken. Yeah. Remember, she is a predator, unlike giraffes. She is more interested is. in Army. catching her stuff and eating meat, right? Yeah. And we only cut it up when we're doing programs with her. When she's to make it she's last got a day year. out, we give her the whole thing and she gets to eat it all herself. <laughs> <laughs> So when she gets back, she's actually got a, a chicken. So she's gonna have got some meds. So we put that in her chicken today. And so we couldn't cut that up. And so that's why straight now she's getting little pieces of ice right now. <laughs> so when she gets back, she's gonna get herself a nice cold little chicken. So Myrta, I believe I said that right, Myrta, uh, wants to know, does she bite? Well, well anything with a mouth can bite, mm -hmm. of course. Um, but she is so used to people and so used to being handled that she has developed a trust bond with us here, the staff here. And it would be very rare for her unless she was upset or something scared her. Really, um, she doesn't bite us on a regular basis, but can she bite? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if she were still a wild owl, mm -hmm. I do not recommend you just yeah. go and try and handle one, an injured one, because they not only can they bite, can it's you not look the, at, it's not the bite I worry about. It's, it's, I was just going to say, yeah. can you look at Nikki's yeah, gloves? So look at that. That's those, what I worry about. Yeah, those talons. That's why Nikki has <laughs> a glove on, a strong protective leather glove to keep those mouse grabbers or talons <laughs> from digging into her skin. 
So really, really yes. great questions, guys. I, I you you never let me down. Mm -hmm. Sure, we'll keep going with that. And thank you so much, Nikki. Okay. I wonder what Tara thinks of Spot. I don't think she really really noticed much. But anyway, so <laughs> she was staring at the giraffe. Oh, oh the skull. Yeah. We do have a really <laughs> cool bio fact <laughs> with us today that we don't use all that often because it's huge and bulky and hard to transport. But we pulled out the red carpet for you guys today, so we'll show it to you in a bit. Um, in fact, very soon, because we are almost to the skull, right? The head of Spot the giraffe is coming up next. Let's start with the mouth, can we? So giraffes have amazing mouths. They really, really do. Let me show you something. How long is your tongue? Stick it out as far as you can. Mm, I'm not being rude to you. I just want to see. Mm, <laughs> couple inches, maybe. Take a look at this. So giraffes have tongues that are 18 to 20 inches long. What? Yep, they are that long. So guys, that's this long, right? I actually have a model I can show you. So they have a long tongue, and why in the world would they need such a long tongue? To make them pick their guesses. I mean, they're tall to begin with, right? Way up in those treetops, eating the leaves out of those branches. Right. Well, this is just an extension of that. So the answer to eat is perfect. They use their tongue to get deeper into the branches of the trees that they're eating from so they can pull more leaves off. I want to show you something. This is an acacia tree. This is one of their favorite trees to eat from. Um, but if you'll notice, there's lots of spines and thorns on the branch of this tree. Oh, thank you, well, Nikki. That helps with the lighting. Yeah. Absolutely. So you can just see it that. Creepy, but it always looks darker on the <laughs> what they yeah. see sometimes. <laughs> so you'll, if you ever come to the zoo and get a chance to go up on our giraffe deck and help us feed our giraffes, you'll notice they have a very slimy coating on their tongues. And that slime layer serves a lot of purposes. Number one, it helps the leaves when they grab them stick to the tongue. It also, because they like to eat from these thorny branches, um, that slime layer, which is just a really thick saliva or spit we have too, it has healing properties in it. So if they do get cut from one of those thorns, it helps the, the puncture wound heal a lot quicker. So very, very, very cool. And another thing, and we'll show you this in, when we do the um, cool new bio fact, but they don't have teeth in the very top front of their jaw. So that enables them to really get that tongue up and out there. And if they come across a branch, not an acacia, because acacias have too many thorns, but another type of branch, they don't use teeth to bite their food, right? They use their tongue to strip it. So they would wrap the tongue around the branch and pull those leaves right off. And they take that tongue and push the food to the backs of their mouth where they do have teeth, molars on the top and the bottom. Now, Megan, I don't know how well you can come over here and check out this amazing new bio fact. Do you want to talk about the tongue color first, or are you going to get that later? Because we did have a question. Oh, well, ask your question, and we can address that first. Okay, why, Daryl wants to know, why is their tongue purple? Daryl, I love that question. Um, you tell me, buddy. What do you think? I'm glad you noticed it. It's funny, because the back of it is pink, like yours and mine, right? But what in the world? The front part is and in some giraffes, it actually appears black mm -hmm. um, or dark purple. Why do you think that might be? Remember one thing, I'm gonna give you a 
it. They eat a lot, right? They're eating 16, 18 hours a day in the hot sun of Africa. So they have that tongue sticking out a lot of the time, getting that food. So keeping them fed that helps deflect the sun. Helps deflect the sun. I like that. Exactly. Ding, ding, ding. You guys are on fire. That's great. So it really is just a built in natural sunscreen. The darker the color, the more melanin is in there. Big fancy term for sunscreen. <laughs> it prevents their tongues from getting sunburned. So super question. And this is a pretty good reenactment of an actual giraffe tongue. Believe me, I've had them all over me, of my arms and everything, and they are this big. But I want to share with you guys, if we can move over to, okay. uh, it's too big for me to move to you. Guys, bair with me. So our camera woman extraordinaire. Just look here. away from the camera for a minute if you have to. Sorry. Check this oh. out. <laughs> we rarely use this, guys, and you can certainly see why. But this is real, and it is the skull of an adult giraffe. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. Check this out. In fact, I also have a skull of a juvenile or a young, maybe look, look, look. preteen or so giraffe. Check this out. That is the size of an adult giraffe. Yeah. That is just mind blowing. And I want you to notice, remember what we said about no teeth on the top and the front? See how they do not? They do on the bottom, right? But that way, this tongue can kind of have free reign to come out and grab those leaves and strip those branches because there's no teeth to get in the way. And then the tongue pushes it to the back of the mouth where those killer molars make quick work of all that fibrous plant material. Woohoo! That's amazing. All right. So moving on up, we'll give whoop, we'll give Megan a minute. Sorry, friends. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay, I can do this. While this is happening, I'll keep telling you that we have another friend who has also a pretty amazing tongue. And even though our friend Todd may not use his tongue in the exact same way that Spot does, still has some similarities with his tongue. Can you think of other animals with long tongues? Maybe you can guess what Nikki's going to bring out. Shout them out to me. Let draw. Cows. <laughs> oh, there we go. I'm hearing lots of them. Oh, my goodness. So we have. <laughs> Wow, guys, this is Todd. Todd is a giant marine toad. Now, how cool is that? I heard some of you guessed frogs or toads. Yep. Indeed. Now, does Todd have a 21 inch long tongue? No, but he does have a long tongue. And what does he use it for? Insects, bugs. Right. So catching his food, right? Now he's a predator, so he uses it a little differently. Even though giraffes use their tongue to get food, Todd to throw that big long sticky tongue out at a fly or a bug or an insect, just like you said, and bring it back in. So he uses it more quickly. And it is, it's like an extension of his, it's like an extra hand for Todd to be able to reach out and grab his food. Now, his tongue is not black <laughs> like the giraffe's because it's not out as long as a giraffe's is, right? It's a quick action. Reach out, grab that fly, pull it back in. Yeah, question about Todd? We do. Um, sorry if I mispronounced, but Uriah, uh, Uriah wants to know how old Todd is. Oh, Uriah, that is a good question. That sounds um, like it's a good question for Beth. That might be a good question for our team of experts who have access to all that information. Mariah, we have so many animals here and so many different things that we talk about that we can't remember every age of every one of them, but we do have it on record. So we will research that for you. And when we find it out, we'll shout that out to you. Okay. Uh, I am not, not positive, 
but I know we had him for at least, I want to say, three or four years. Okay, so he's years. an adult. He's, he's yeah. pretty big. He gets all blown up when we pick him yeah. up, and that's his... I'm going to post him right now. <laughs> that's his defense mechanism, guys, right? So something's about to grab him. His defense, or his way of warding off being eaten, is to blow up real big with air and that way whatever was about to bite him might not be allowed be able to quite grab something like that <laughs> yes another question julie wants to know why does he blink when he breathes well i didn't notice that he's actually breathing blinking as he breathes that's very very cool just watching him it's blinking. i think it's kind of randomly it looks like it's it looked stretch, like it was but, really posed like but, but what i think is pretty cool they can actually when you see they kind of do it right yeah there, but they also it might be when he's he's swallowing because they actually use their eyes when they eat that catch that fly and they bring it in their mouth they use their eyes to push down the food to go further down the back of that's cell. very cool you <laughs> remember <laughs> learning yeah. about that yeah. they actually use the the size of their eyes and their eyes
they use infrasonic sound waves to communicate with one another. Giraffes are very social. They like to live in groups, right? And so sometimes those groups over the vast savannas of Africa and the vast grasslands may get separated, right? So they need to have a way to come back together. Um, and they do that by communicating with that low frequency. What, does anyone know what you call a group of giraffes? Because they do like to live together in groups. Anybody got that? Not you, Brittany. Brittany's <laughs> acting like nothing. Please, <laughs> ask me, ask me. Well, you work here, silly. You should know. Oh, that's but a good guess. Herds. herds is a great guess. And that would not be incorrect, but there's an even more specific. Oh, somebody says a tall. That's a tall. good guess. I like that. Tall glass of water. A pride, a true. A pride, a true. Get this, guys. You're going to really see why it's appropriate when I tell you. So a group of giraffes is called a tower. A tower, wonder why? <laughs> they tower over everything, don't they? And they're as tall as a tower. So that infrasonic sound can help one tower of giraffes communicate with another tower of giraffes. And I just love that, that's so cool. Okay, moving up quickly, past the talking communication stuff. We did the eyes, we talked about that giant eyeball shaped like a tennis ball, size of a tennis ball for that good vision. But, oh, what's this? What are these? Love these. I know you guys know this. Help me out. Call, call it whatever comes to your mind. Horns. Show you a picture. Horns is a great guess. Tufts. Tufts, I like that. Oh, oh, there are tufts on top of these. Oh, I can't tell if I'm in close enough to you. Yeah. Well, let me show you. Here is a, a, a good picture so you can maybe see a little bit. Yeah. It's good. Any more guesses? I'll tell you if you don't know. Um, <laughs> an antenna? Antenna. <laughs> That's a good guess. Sorry, I'm not really good. Antler. Antlers and horns are pretty common guesses. Um, and I can certainly understand why, guys. But the truth is, these are called ossicones. Ossa meaning bone, right? So these are very unique in the animal world. There are only about two animals that have ossicones. Certainly the giraffe and his relative, the okapi, have ossicones. And they are just amazing. When a giraffe is born, he has ossicones, but they're pushed down on his skull like this to make the birth process easier and as he gets older they pop up they've got bone in there but when they're babies the bone is not attached to the skull it takes a while for the bone to actually ossify and become attached to the skull so believe it or not these are actually part of the animal's skeletal system how cool is that i just think it's so cool and they're different from horns in the sense that most horns are covered with like a hard, we call it keratin sheath. Um, not so with ossicones. This is actually bone covered with nothing but skin and hair. And you can see that again in that picture. Ooh, yeah, there, go. there we go. And that's where the tufts come in. Now, both males and females have them. But the males, they tend to be a lot bigger. And sometimes they have more than just the two that we typically see. Um, sometimes they can have up to five. So very, very cool. Now, I don't know. I hate to ask you, Megan, can you yeah, roll yeah. back over can do to it. the large? OK, guys, we're moving again. This time. is really cool, really worth it. Because look, look at the ossicone. That's how big they can get. And imagine. You have an angry male giraffe that's mad at his friend because he wants the same girlfriend as he does. Between the necks and these ossicones, they make vicious battle rams and they are amazing. And you can see right here on the action, this is an actual skull where it's adhered to the bone of the skull. Whereas, moving, 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 <laughs> sorry. But in this juvenile, you can see 
how you can, you can. they're not nearly, it's not nearly as adhered to the skull as it is in the adult. So that's just so amazing. Giraffes are so cool. Okay, so Spot, one more thing I want to talk to our friends about. We've done Pulse, the Ossicum. We skipped one little amazing part, and that's your brain. <laughs> so you know what I think is the coolest thing about giraffes' brains? They only need to sleep 30 minutes a day. Oh, how cool is that? I'd get so much done if all I had to do was sleep for 30 minutes a day. But that is all the sleep their brains require. They, it doesn't make sense when you are an animal out in the grasslands to need a whole lot of sleep, right? When you're a prey species, right? Because there's predators everywhere there in Africa. So they have adapted to not having to sleep for a very long time. And they don't even take that 30 minutes all at one time. They might catch a one minute nap here, a six minute nap there, but all they need is about 30 to 40 minutes a day of sleeping. How much sleep do we need? Eight hours, 20 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing lots of hours, yeah. Humans usually spend about a third of our lives, eight hours a day, sleeping. The giraffes don't have to yeah. do that. So I just think that's one more on top of many, many, many cool things about our friend Spot here. And I can't thank you guys enough for joining us today to learn about these guys and get the gist of this beautiful animal. Um, if you have any questions, shout them out to us real quick. But all that talking about sleeping and napping kind of making me want to take one. <laughs> so thanks again, guys. We sure appreciate you being here. See you next time in the classroom.